Hello everyone and welcome to Art and Design. My name is Thorgeir and today we're gonna check out the Brush Studio in the Procreate 5 Open Beta. Let's dive right into it. Okay, so to clarify, I'm running the Procreate 5 Beta version 7. Uh, this is the current build that I'm running. And in this build of the program, they've made a lot of nice improvements, uh, but I'm going to hold off on a fully fledged tutorial until the actual update comes out because I'm not sure if these are the final settings. I'm not sure if things might change before it gets released, but let's just dive right into the Press Studio and sort of just explore what you can do with it. Okay, so what is so awesome about the Brush Studio that they had to change the entire interface? Like configuring the brush right now is a full screen experience compared to the way it used to be uh, in the current version, which is this uh, specific window right here. And you switch between the different tabs on the bottom. Okay, so first things first, we have this nice big canvas to draw on. So if I pick a color, for example, let's choose yellow, and if I just draw something on the canvas and then pick a little bit of pink right here you can see I can just draw on the canvas what is beautiful about this is I can now change the settings and see how the settings affect the brush this is really really nice so there's a direct interaction in real time between what you are seeing and what you're doing so this really helps to build an understanding of you know, what these settings are actually doing you don't necessarily need to understand the words that describe what streamline is you can just sort of draw a shape like this and play around with streamline and you sort of start to build an understanding that it's that it's sort of making the line uh, less jacket it's sort of streamlining it I guess right and um, of course we can change the colors of the brush or we can pick another color uh, and add to it like so and we can increase the size of the brush with this one reset the brush and clear the drawing pad so with that out of the way i think these settings right here are the same as in procreate uh, 4 so the tapering should be there we go stroke pressure taper touch taper this was the thing that links them together now it's a little bit different, link tip sizes, it just says it. So overall, just nice usability improvements, making the interface feel more intuitive. This is also really nice, so you can see what this actually is doing. And you can see this is the start and this is the end of the stroke. Now I'm not going to go over what all of these settings do, that's going to be reserved for the tutorial video, but let's go ahead and move into the shape and uh, let's look at some of the changes there. Okay, so the first thing we see here is the big, big shape. Now, this is the actual stamp that uh, gets applied when we tap on the canvas. We see this is this, right? Makes sense. Now, we can change this shape. If we tap on edit, here we can see the actual size of the shape. We can import a photo, import a file, and pick from the source library or paste. Now, back in Procreate 4, in order to paste uh, something in the shape, you had to tap and hold. You just had to knew that this was how to do it, and then tap paste. But here it's clearly written out, paste. Makes sense, the way to do it. Uh, one thing to note, if you want to invert this brush, just tap with two fingers and that'll invert it. So that's just something to bear in mind. It doesn't have an invert button. Now, one feedback for me would be that I would like to be able to create the shape myself right here. I think it only makes sense since I have this big canvas right here uh, that I should just be able to pick a brush and start drawing my shape myself. Just right in here and then press done and then I've created a new shape. That would be really cool. So the way to do that would be to uh, go out of this, go back into the gallery view create a new square canvas 
and start from here. Start layering down the actual brush that you want to create. So if you want to create a brush, I don't know, it looks something like something like this. So if we create something like this, what I actually need to do is I need to create a new layer. I need to put it onto this layer. I need to make it completely white. Uh, and then I have to paste it in. So fill the background layer. And then I need to merge them. You just need to know that this is how it's done. Um, if you copy this layer like so, uh, it's not gonna work out the way you would expect it. So let's merge them together copy and then we go back to the brush that we had which was this one right here and then we go edit and then we go import paste so now we got the brush we can rotate it simply by doing this and then i'm gonna invert it like so and now we have the brush ready to go so that would be a nice improvement if I was able to actually just paint the brush in right here. That would just save a few steps and allow us to create the brushes much quicker. Looking at the shape behavior right here, uh, basically we have a similar thing going on from Procreate 4. Uh, we have the ability to add uh, more strokes. So if your brush is sort of really weak and it doesn't really put down enough paint, what you can do is you can just increase the stroke count. So then it basically does the same thing but again and again and again all right now count jitter basically adds a little bit of uh, variation in the strokes that get added uh, but this thing right here is something new so let me do something like this something like this all right now if i fine tune this let's see what's going on This is the angle of the brush itself. That makes sense. And then we can specify how thick it should be. So if we want to compress the brush down and make it very thin, we can just do that with this setting right here. But let's move on to the grain. And this is really, really nice. So basically, if we tap on the edit, we have a similar thing as we had with the shape. So we have a sort of full screen experience showing us the actual grain here. Would like it if I could sort of zoom into it, but uh, we can rotate it. And of course we can invert it by tapping the two fingers. Now, this button right here is really cool. So if you tap on auto repeat, it will actually allow us to manually extend the grain and basically make it blend together seamlessly at the edges. And we can really start to play around with the seamlessness of the edges right here. So having it soft might work very well for a specific type of grain and having it hard might work uh, for another type of grain. We have pyramid blending, which uh, seems like it's doing a very good job of blending the edges. We have mirror overlap, so where the actual uh, grain overlaps, basically repeating, creating a mirror. Again, might work very well for a specific type of grain, while other types of grain might not work very well. This sort of looks like a wood floor right now, so that's really nice. Then we can change the scaling, how big the area that the overlap should be. And then, of course, we can rotate it. And of course, move it with the brush like so. Really, really nice, really nice. So when you're happy with the results, let's do something like, something like this. And yeah, and then just press done. It creates a texture for us. And then we have our texture. Actually, really, really nice grain texture. Now, here we have the blend mode, and uh, this is basically the blend mode for the grain. And uh, I talked to Michael at Savage Interactive, uh, one of the developers of Procreate. And Michael, he talked to the engineers and the developers that um, sort of helped to create the Brush Studio engine. 
and he sort of explained to me that there are now actually multiple plant modes so we have plant mode for the grain we also have uh, plant modes for the burnt edges we have plant mode uh, for the actual rendering the brush so there's a lot of blending that is going on now we have four modes of glaze we have light we have uniformed intense and heavy we have uniform blending and intense blending so there are two uh, blending modes and four glaze modes now in the last version of the beta these rendering modes were all completely different uh, so this might even change uh, before the program comes out of course we have wet edges uh, which basically give us sort of a watercolor effect it's really nice we have also burnt edges which uh, i think create a sort of harsher boundary between where the actual brush ends and the, and the inner part of the brush is. Moving on to wet mix, pretty much the same uh, settings here as in the previous version of Procreate, except we can uh, increase the jitter of the wetness. Yep, that's something that you can say. Moving on to the color dynamics, here we basically get into the juicy stuff where we are actually able to create some very cool effects. So I'm going to add a color pressure hue change. So basically if I change the pressure on the pencil, it'll actually make the hue of the color change. So now I'm tapping lightly and sort of orangey red colors and if I tap hard down we get into the blues really really cool and we can also make it change saturation so the harder down we press the less saturated it becomes or the more saturated it becomes. Same is true for brightness. If you press hard down, it's really bright or it's really dark. And then the secondary color, so it basically should swap between the primary and the secondary color. Now the categories themselves, it's basically stamp color jitter. Stamp color jitter basically um, means that each individual stamp, so this is a stamp, will jitter, so will vary uh, based on specific things like hue, for example. So if we clear the path and do stamps like this, we can see the hue changes in each individual stamp. Now, when you're drawing a stroke, the same thing is happening. You're actually just creating a bunch of stamps and the rendering engine actually specifies how this gets laid down and how it blends with the underlying color and the colors that you're applying on top of it. So basically we can vary the hue of the stamps so just give it a subtle uh, variation in hue or subtle variations in saturation or you know lightness or darkness so that just makes the brush a little bit more live and I've been adding these settings to almost all of the brushes that I use. The stroke color jitter basically means that each individual stroke so these are three strokes they will change in hue depending on where you put this or saturation or lightness or darkness or the secondary color <laughs> pretty pretty cool i've talked about the color pressure that's basically when you press down hard and then we have the color tilt it's Obviously, uh, how much you tilt the brush will uh, change the hue. Maybe the tilt degree uh, needs to be set lower on this brush or something. Ah, there we go. We need to tilt it quite a lot in order for this to change. Yeah, pretty cool. Color dynamics. Now, moving on from color dynamics, Let's take a look at dynamics. Pretty much nothing has changed here. 
maybe it's something internally i'm not really sure but this basically uh, is the exact same as it was in procreate 4. so basically we can vary the size of the breast depending on the speed or the opacity of it based on the speed so yeah that's that's there and we have uh, variations in the theater uh, based on the size or the opacity. And moving on from dynamics to Apple Pencil, here we can basically see uh, the same settings that we had in Procreate 4, except uh, this thing right here is a little bit more intuitive to use. As you can see, this is simply the tilt of the brush, so you can specify when tilting actually happens. So it was at nine degrees and it's really easy to sort of visualize that nine degrees is a very steep tilt. So maybe having it a little bit lower might make sense. Anyways, the properties, that's all pretty much the same as it used to be. And so let's actually move on to about this brush. So this is really nice. So you can actually sign this brush to you um, and actually add um, you know, photo from the camera. Let's just pick the logo like so. And yeah, there we go. Made by Art and Design, created 15th of October, 2019. This is the signature. And now I'm gonna create a restore point. So if I ever make changes to it, say I do something like this and, oh no, I really messed up the brush. I can simply go back to the drawing pad and reset all brush settings and it should go back to the restore point let's hope nice yes it worked pretty cool all right so that is the brush studio in a nutshell a uh, pretty big nutshell but pretty cool nonetheless uh, the final thing to mention is the ability to combine brushes together now in order to combine brushes you simply have to find two brushes that you want to combine so let's take Dr. Tattoo here, duplicate that, and I don't know, let's do this one right here. And I can just come duplicate them uh, just to be safe. And then I'm gonna pick the primary brush and the secondary brush. I'm gonna make this the primary and this the secondary. And then once you tap combine, the secondary brush is gonna get added to the primary brush. And now we can see we have two brushes right here interacting with yet even another blending mode. So <laughs> yeah, there's just blending modes all over the place. Um, absolutely love it because it gives me the ability to create pretty much whatever I want. So really, really nice. Now I have a tattoo brush with some really nice uh, shapes that are following it, which is basically this brush. And I can tap on this brush right here and I can go into it and change a few things if I want to just absolutely fantastic now I've made a new brush from two other brushes all right so I think that's gonna be it for this video it turned out to be uh, <laughs> way longer than I anticipated and I only talked about the things that are new uh, I might have touched upon a few other points but so much progress that we can see I mean where else have you seen a brush engine creation studio like this on an iPad. I mean, this is just miles ahead of any competitor at the moment. So big applause to Savage Interactive for making this. This is absolutely fantastic. Anyways, that's gonna do it for me. I wanna thank you all very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. And if you liked the video, please click that thumbs up button and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're gonna be doing a lot more art and design related stuff. Been mainly focusing on procreate because i mean why wouldn't i it's absolutely fantastic anyways that's gonna do it for me thank you all very much for watching see you in the next one take care bye bye